Buongiorno. So we're back. Sorry it's been a while. Uh, I've been trying to come up with the next project and I didn't have any, you know, fun tidbits to just pop up and do a short and chat with, but we officially have a project now and it should have happened a little bit sooner, but my inability to pay attention to detail and order the right parts uh, kind of put us about another week or two behind. So needless to say, I've got tires to return and refunds to get, but we're doing tires. Street Glide is a 2019, I bought it in 20. We still have the original tires on it. The bike's sitting at about 10,500-ish miles. I'm pretty sure I've gotten a good amount of time and life out of those tires. So I already did the obligatory, uh, you know, burnout in the driveway. I've got a picture of that. I'll throw that up here somewhere. Uh, that was a good old time because what better time to light up that rear tire than when it needs to be changed because I'm cheap. But apparently not today. So we're going to go ahead and get the fat boy backed up, get the street glide tossed up on the cheap uh, Harbor Freight jacket. It does it's the job. It's not great. It's not the best, but it gets it up in the air and that's all I need. But I might have splurged a bit more than I should have. So not only are we doing tires, but we're doing wheels and we're doing coastal moto wheels. So not going to show which ones they are just yet. You know, we're, uh, you will find out. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to obviously do a regular, you know, walkthrough on how I'm going to do all this. There are going to be parts that I check in, check out, check in, check out other parts where we'll just kind of fast forward some wrenching, but I'll still walk you through like I normally do. But, uh, Coastal Moto did provide brackets because we're going up to a 21 inch front. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the Cush drive to that guy. So, you know, while we're at it, got my belt tensioner, got my new rear rotor bolts, front rotor bolts, some brand new Loctite and some brand new anti seize So that way nothing comes loose while we're out on the road. Uh, so like I said, get the soft tail out of the way, get the street glide up in the air and start unbolting things. Uh, and we'll check back once we've made some progress. So hold up. Okay, so bikes up. To throw a couple of straps on here just to, you know, play it safe because take one wheel off or the other, it's going to be unbalanced. So, a little trick that I learned was a little screwdriver there to keep this thing from spinning. You know, cracked this end loose here, and that is somewhere between a 7 8 and a 1 inch nut. I don't know exactly what it is because I don't have any, any sockets exactly that size, so I use a 12.1 inch. So I will likely spin that on, snug it down, but I won't torque it until I can actually get the right socket. I'm gonna say, oh, I don't know, 11 sixteenths, 15 sixteenths. I mean, if you know, drop it down below. But, uh, so we're gonna keep trucking along on that. We're gonna pull the fender off, because I do have that riser, so the fender's gotta go. Don't know what size Allen I need yet. But, uh, you know, at least that nut's loose, so I gotta take those out for the fender. I gotta take these two 12 points out for the rotor, kinda hang that off to the side on both ends, and then we got a front wheel out. So let me keep trucking along. When I get uh, sizes on these, I'll let you know. But, one sec. All right, as promised, the fender bolts are a quarter inch, and the caliper bolt is a right there I guess is a 10 millimeter 12 point you want to make sure you use the 12 point so you don't strip anything out fits on there so I'm gonna start by getting the fender out of here so that way I don't accidentally dick it up pulling the calipers off get that set aside nice and safe and kind of go from there I've last time I did one of these was on a 2014 victory judge and that's uh it's similar in a lot of ways, but different in a lot of other ways. So, see if I can't uh, see if I can keep from screwing this up. We'll be back again. All right, one tire out. Got everything out here. 
uh, I would recommend uh, like a dead blow hammer or a rubber mallet uh, just to kind of persuade this axle out of here. Fortunately, I had a small piece of wood and a even smaller hammer, so I was able to coax it through without damaging anything. And just make sure you, you know, take a mental note of your uh, ABS sensor here and where that's located. And then we've got a wheel spacer. And if you can see it, it's awful dirty. There you go. These little lines were facing out. I don't know if that matters, but if that's how a factory had it, that's how I'm gonna do my darn, just put it back in. So, and I almost forgot about this little pinch bolt here. That guy, for whatever reason, was uh, like a six millimeter. I mean, I had a, a standard, it just had a little bit of slop. I didn't like it, I didn't wanna screw anything up. So I switched to one metric bolt for that pinch bolt and got the wheel out. So now we're gonna go ahead and start pulling our rotor off. Didn't bother with the polished rotors because, well, why bother when they're all gonna start looking like this after the first time you use them? So, and it's not a show bike, so what do I care? New wheels did come with new wheel bearings. Um, since it's an ABS bike, it's got the ABS bearing in it uh, on this side or the other, I don't know which, plus it's all covered in dirt. So, uh, I do have that stack of paper there, which is my service manual. We'll go through the torque specs uh, at, for my bike, okay? If you happen to have the same bike, good, that's awesome. But these are the torque specs for my 19 Street Glide standard with ABS. So, you know, at your own risk, you know? So I'm gonna get that up on the bench, pull down some sockets, see what I need and start cracking these bad boys loose and you'll get to see the new wheels. So shouldn't be but a couple minutes. All right, so these bolts are T40s and I did confirm with both Harley and a lo my local mechanic, they are one time use only. So we're gonna take them out and we're gonna throw them away. I don't even wanna put them into my bucket of takeoff bolts because I don't wanna risk using them again and I shouldn't. So I did pick up some replacement bolts and there's your part number for anybody interested that happens to have uh, a bike that these will fit. So I'm not even gonna hazard a guess, but I will put uh, the links down in the description. So we'll just go ahead and pop this off. Bolt comes free. Looks like we got a washer and like a, a wave washer, whatever the hell you call these things. I kind of got a bend to them. I don't know if that's technically a lock washer or, or what, but that's on the underside of the bolt sitting like that. So these we'll reuse. Set those aside separate and pull these, flip the tire, do it again, and then open our bags. I did, like I said, I'm gonna do some Loctites, the blue Loctite, put the bolts back in, which means that I'm probably gonna go at these with a wire brush to try to knock off this green Loctite, thread lock, whatever the hell it is. So start from a clean slate. So when we come back, big, big, uh, big wheel reveal. So, all right. All right, so thread lock is on. Bolts are in, not torqued yet. I got my Per my handy dandy cheat sheet here, my front rotor bolts are gonna be 16 to 24 foot pounds. Probably gonna go right in the middle and call it 20. On these. These are the Coastal Moto Marlins, and I think they are sexy as hell. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go ahead and replace my uh, chassis lights that were under that front fender, because whatever 3M that thing used, I think they're up to about 6M on that. I essentially just shredded the cheap chinesium lights that I had in there. So, ah, well, you know, order a couple of more of those just to really light up that, uh, this new wheel here, but this is going to look sick. So we're going to get these torqued down, like I said, about 20 foot pounds, flip it over, do the same, and we should be able to wheel it on back and reinstall it with our axle over here that I did go ahead and wipe down real good. We're going to hit that with some anises. Hopefully I don't end up wearing more of it and it goes on the axle but uh i'm gonna need two hands for this so uh 
check back. All right, so that was actually surprisingly easy. I did end up running down to a buddy's house, picked up his half inch torque wrench because apparently all of my Torx bits are half inch and I don't have a half inch torque wrench. So went ahead and picked that up while I was down there. Uh, also borrowed an 15 sixteenths socket because that's what we need for the nut, uh, the axle nut. So got the wheel in, got the spacers in, got the wheels, uh, the ABS sensor in, and everything's just kind of finger tight. Uh, so got to go through and torque everything. But got the rotor bolts torqued up. I did torque those. I'm going to my cheat sheet here. The rotor bolts got torqued to 20 foot pounds, in case I didn't say that earlier. I've got to torque my axle to 70 to 75 foot pounds. My little pinch bolt between 18 and 22. And my calipers are 28 to 38. So I know the calipers I'm going to set to 33. So I, I just kind of go right in the middle. So, but so far, it's looking good. Really digging that 21 inch. I mean, I know it's up in the air, but that looks clean. So I'm going to get everything torqued up. And I know that it's important that the hole here be facing forward. Because if it's facing straight up, as you're cruising around, if you don't have the uh, the covers on here, you'll get a whistling sound coming as the wind whips past that hole. So I just went ahead and faced it forward because that's how it was, and I don't I don't care about the whistling because I got axle covers that are going to go on here as I had before. So like I said we're going to torque these down on both sides, going to torque that down, and we're going to torque down the axle nut right here now this is your your abs sensor apparently i'm getting anti seeds on there damn it but if you look back here see if that comes through you got the little wire here you want to make sure this is pushed all the way up it's got a little bump stop before you snug everything down so that way your abs sensor works like it should so and these are the cheap chinese lights i'm going to snip off order new ones and reinstall but uh it, it's coming out well i'm digging it but it's about 8 30 on a wednesday night i'm gonna button this up i'm gonna get the the fender on get it risen up and then i'm gonna call it a night you know fat kid's hungry he's gotta go eat still sit down and relax hang out with the spousal unit but uh Tomorrow we'll be tackling the rear wheel. That should be fun. It's definitely more involved because you're dealing with that belt, but uh, that should be a good time. So that's it. I'm gonna button this up and I'll get back tomorrow and we'll knock out that rear end. All right, so it's the next day and we're gonna go ahead and get both saddlebags off, set those over there. Then we're gonna go ahead and pull the slip-ons off and my little helpers here uh, get those set aside and then we'll start uh, turning wrenches and getting back to you on what bolts or what but uh, I don't know if I showed you guys showed you guys this but uh, this year out at Sturgis did go ahead and pick up a set of these uh, Rick Rack thumb screws so they're a lot lower profile than those goofy 90 degree L-shaped ones so definitely worth the money. They're a little on the spendy side. I don't remember how much they were, but um, if I remember it, I'll throw a link down in the description on those two. But you know, nice and solid, real heavy duty. And I, I really, really digging them because you know nothing catches coming in and out of the bag. So I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get these bags set aside and check back once we got some sockets and wrenches and start having our fun. So one sec. Okay, so ran into a snag, but we got the bags off, we got the pipes off. These are just two half inchers on either side. And we've got a five eighths bolt. Let's see if I can find it here for the uh, the clamp. Somewhere under here, Some, somewhere. And then a nine sixteenths for the other side. But this big ass nut is a one and seven sixteenths socket, or if you don't have or can't find that, a 36 millimeter would do the trick too. So I had to run down to O'Reilly's, pick one of those up, 
so that way I could do this right instead of trying to redneck it. So this is on there freaking snug. So I'm hoping I can break it loose with just the ratchet. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to find a extension bar to give it some uh, some more love. So while I cuss and sweat, uh, I'm going to set you guys down and see if we can't uh, break this bad boy loose. So wish me luck. All right, so that was a little fiddly, but we got it. There are these two bolts that hold the caliper on to this arm kind of sits in there like like yay so i went and pulled those those were five sixteenths and then just kind of played musical jack kind of up and down up and down kind of moving around I'm letting the kind of the, the bike and the jack work for me here but pulling this guy out was unfun because there's this little nub in here that kept trying to hang up on the wheel itself so i kind of had to keep jimmy in the the wheel around and work the caliper but eventually it all slipped free you know we got our uh, our abs sensor here you know that's going to go in on this side and then there was a spacer that fell out on the other end so and then obviously you got your nut and then your cam i just kind of set that down exactly how it's got to go back up on the bike and then if we wheel around there's our big old axle Here's that spacer. Didn't appear to be a right or wrong on that. And went ahead and popped the belt loose. So now I may have to, you know, pop some straps here. But my plan is to slowly lift the bike so I can roll the tire out, disassemble it, reassemble the new one, roll the new one in, and lower the bike down over the top of it. You know, a little less fighting trying to work smarter not harder here first time for everything so i'm going to do that and i will check back with you guys when i've got this tire disassembled and everything reassembled on the new wheel which is actually over there and we're going to talk about that cush drive just a little bit from what i learned from my mechanic so one sec all right well those bolts were on a whole lot tighter so that's good to know and it ended up having to use a little percussive persuasion thanks to the dead blow but everything's off so i'm gonna give uh this old pulley here a quick inspection make sure everything looks good i really hope it looks good but this is the cush drive that was in the bike it's just rubber it's real squishy this is the new one from super cush apparently and it's it's a lot lot firmer so according to my mechanic my mechanic uh, these rubber stock guys should be swapped about every 5,000 miles or every time you swap out your tires so I didn't realize but he said that uh, you know if you can grab a hold of your rotor while it's on the bike of course and give it a you know a, a shake and if you've got some movement in there your cush drive is tired so this one he said it's much better as the one that he throws in all of his customer bikes, his bikes. And this one should be good for about, uh, what do you say, fifteen to 20,000 miles before it needs to be replaced. And honestly, guys, for 40 bucks on Dennis Kirk's website, you know, why the hell not? So, I mean, you can just see just watching this thing flop around. The rubber's just way softer. So, and then for those that don't know, this isn't actually bolted to the bike. It's all just press fit into the wheel courtesy of the cush drive so and all this does is it allows the torque from the belt and anybody correct me if i'm wrong but this is my understanding is when the belt spins it grabs the pulley and then it twists this cush drive which in turn then spins your wheel on the back so this is kind of cushions that that torque that motion that spinning motion uh translating power from the transmission through the belt to the rear wheel so this is going to snug it up make it last longer you know feel a little bit little less squishy so but i said that's what my mechanic told me if you guys have a different understanding or if he's completely off base you know drop it down below let me know you know because i'm i'm open to learning i don't know what the hell i'm doing so i'm going to go ahead and get the new wheel over here 
up on the workbench, drop in the new cush, throw out the old one, use my new bolts, and uh, for those interested, there's the part number for the rear ones, the 43567-92. Uh, for the 10 front bolts and the five rears from Harley, it was about 60 bucks. So for whatever reason, my local dealership charges an extra screw you tax to what the website has. But the website, you can't buy them from. You have to go to your dealer. So what sense does that make? So like I said, uh, I'm going to get this all buttoned up. These come preloaded with some white Loctite. I'm going to scratch that off, go back to my blue, double check that with my mechanic. He says it's not a problem, it's what he does. So once everything is you know, locked together and cinched up, we'll wheel back over to the bike, clean up the, uh, the axle, hit that with some more anti-seize here, lower the bike down over the wheel and tire, and hopefully run the axle through get everything buttoned up, torqued down. I'll go through some of those torque specs as I go and hope that I've got everything back together correctly because I know you got to make sure your rear, rear tire in there is square. So I have to pull a couple of measurements from or pull a measurement from one side and hopefully let it correlate to the other. So fingers crossed that I don't screw this up. So we'll check back. Okay, so wheel is on. That was a bit of a bear. But we got it. So I got the wheels uh, ABS sensor in there. And remember, just kind of make sure it's lifted up all the way. And I still got to get my caliper bolts in. So don't sweat that on. Uh, went ahead and got the wheel torqued down. The first torque on that is anywhere from 15 to 20 foot pounds. That kind of lets you adjust these cams on either side so you can get your belt tension set. Once you have your belt tension set and you, what I did is I measured from the center of this bolt to the center of this bolt. You know, and then the same thing on the other side. And I came out to about 14 and three quarter inch. So now I know my wheel is mostly square inside the opening so I shouldn't be driving down the road all cattywampus. Once I had that set and I double checked it like eight times, I went ahead and gave it its final torque which is between 95 and 105 foot pounds. So I went at 100. Now all I've got left to do is to pop on this little E clip. Goes right there. Pretty much just keeps that uh, nut from backing out. I just, it pops off with a screwdriver. So looks like I'm gonna have to pop it on with the screwdriver because that's just killing my thumb. So pop that on, that'll be done. I'll pop these two bolts in, get them torqued down to 35 to 45, uh, sorry, 30 to 45 foot pounds. And then the belt deflection uh, on the other side, you know, you have one of these handy dandy gauges here. Yeah, set the little rubber band at 10 pounds, put it on the belt and push up and then there's at least on my bike and probably similar, there's a little window with little hash marks on there. Each hash mark is a 16th of an inch. So you keep pushing up on this until this O-ring bottoms out to the, the brass, that's 10 pounds, and you should be between a quarter inch and seven sixteenths. And that's between four and seven of those hash marks if I counted correctly. So I'm set probably just a hair over a quarter inch give it a ride you know probably once it gets warmer unless i feel brave and probably check it again just to you know make sure nothing moved on me hopefully nothing does so i think we're good there so i'm gonna like i said i'm gonna go ahead and get those bolts in get them torqued down if anybody's interested this is a little cheat sheet that i made up of which bolts were which and what the torque specs were for my bike out of the service manual. So don't bank on the fact that these are going to be your numbers. And if you do, it's not my fault if righty tidy becomes righty loosey all of a sudden. Uh, so I'm gonna go, like I said, get everything buttoned up here and get it back in the chalk, get it, the jack out of the way and call it a night. So I'm gonna do that and then get back with you before we close out okay she's back together she's done to dow that god that looks mean 
That is so close. Definitely glad I went to the 21. So, I mean, I guess we'll figure out how it rides, but, uh, God, that looks good. I've been jealous of my brother's soft tail with the 21 inch front, and now I think I give him a run for his money. So still gotta get it out for a ride though. I mean, you can see it's still kind of sitting up at a rake. Uh, that's mostly because of the chalk, but I'm sure it's probably still gonna be sitting at somewhat of a rake, but yeah, we'll find out once I get it down on the ground and on the kickstand. But, uh, you know, got that fancy shiny new rear wheel in and you can't fucking see it. But hey, at least they match, so you guys out there that get all grumpy when they don't match, can't get grumpy with me. So, it, that's about all I got. Uh, so, she's done. I mean, I used a bunch of tools and had to buy a couple of new ones, such as some torque wrench and uh, dead blow. Gotta get that back to a buddy of mine, his big ass socket. I had to buy a big ass socket. Remember, this is a 36 mil. You can also get away with an inch and seven sixteenths. So uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, I know it's a little bit different than how I've been doing it with a fast forward, but as dirty, needed both hands the whole time, so. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that I did, you know, drop them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you don't like them, tell me you don't like them. You know, if you do, let me know. I, I really want to know. Not that it matters at the end of the day, but I still want to know, you know, but uh, other than that, if there's any comments, concerns, hit those down below. I always get back to you. Um, but if you would, you know, like, comment, subscribe, and all that. So far, we are up to, at the time of this filming, 49 subscribers, and you guys are still loving the video on the new bars, and I don't have a damn clue why, because to me, that was the worst video I did. But, hey, maybe you guys just like bad videos. I hope not. But, uh, that's all I got, so until next time, or next project. Oh, side note, if I didn't mention it earlier, the Coastal Moto guys, uh, you order up their wheels and then they will give you a credit if you send yours back whether they're stalkers or any aftermarket wheels they will give you a credit now it, it all depends on what the wheels are you know mine obviously we're just the stock enforcers you know so I didn't get much but I am gonna ship them back I just got to box it up I will have to call Coastal Moto and then let them know they're ready to rock and roll give them the address and they will order the UPS guy to come and pick them up shipping label in hand i don't got to pay for a damn thing and they will send them on back once they get them unbox them make sure they are as promised then they will issue a refund in the amount of dollars uh to me so it really makes this a lot more affordable than what i've been thinking for the last several years so if you guys are thinking about it, you know, Coastal Moto, they got, I'll have their link down below. Ton of options. Like I said, these are the Marlins. You know, they have them in chrome, black, uh, cross cut or contrast cut. So no affiliation, just like them and spent money. So that's it. Now I'm done. So until next time, we'll catch y'all later.